You're watching live coverage of the Mackinac Policy Conference here on Detroit Public Television. When you think about what someone needs to reach their highest potential, feeling secure in where you live, having a place to live is top on that list. Two folks thinking a lot about that are Ryan Hurt, CEO of Lighthouse, and Kelly Dobler, Chief Advancement Officer at Samaritus. Thanks for being here, both of you. Thank you. Thanks Absolutely. Um, Ryan, my guess is most of us who are able to attend the conference um, take for granted, right, the luxury of having a place to live. Um, but housing security is a huge impediment if we're trying to level set the field, have people, you know, live up to this potential that we're all talking about in workforce training. Tell me about your work. Sure. So at Lighthouse, um, we provide a, a whole range of services oriented around poverty alleviation. We focus a lot on housing because for many households, uh, their rent check is their biggest expense every month. And it really makes a big difference in their ability to sustain the whole rest of, of their uh, you know, household situation. And so our focus is certainly on creating affordable housing, uh, whether affordable rental or home ownership opportunities to lower income people in our community. But the issue itself is really a problem with the whole ecosystem. So we tend to think of uh, affordable housing and housing security as something that predominantly impacts lower income people. When we bring higher income jobs into an economy, we're naturally bringing low to mid income workers into that community to support those additional folks. And with that comes the housing problem to support the whole economy. So really affordable housing should be thought of as an economic development tool, um, but frequently because the tools that we have for it are named things like the low income housing tax credit, there's a lot of stigma around it. Um, but in reality, um, what I'm here to hope, hopefully advocate for is we need to be start thinking about housing the way we think about agriculture. Like if, if, if the market isn't meeting the need, we need to do something to meet the market need across the board. We can't just think of it as something that just serves people specifically who have an acute poverty situation. Yeah, I think that brings up a good point, Ryan, too, if, if I may, Zoe, right? Please, Kelly. Um, <laughs> just because I, you'd mentioned the stigma around affordable housing, and you have that, that, that idea of who qualifies for affordable housing. And I think there's a lot of work to be done as a community to understand who that actually is and what incomes qualify for affordable housing and expand that conversation to beyond um, just areas of concentrated poverty and you hear that and it's not the same and when we talk about affordable housing options and different housing products that really span a full continuum so people can be transitional and grow into single home ownership on that path to self-sufficiency and to your point housing is fundamental to everything um, and creating that safety and security so they can arrive and thrive is huge so in, in a sense though i think it's important to note there really is no such thing as self-sufficiency, right? We, we, it's invisible to us, but our food is subsidized. All of our food, yep. right? Whatever our income is subsidized, right? And so I think um, it's important for folks to realize this is a supply-demand issue that really can be impacted by just more units on the market. It doesn't have to be you know, specifically affordable units in order to help us really resolve what's an impending and, 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 and uh, continuing crisis between uh, increase in construction costs and, and all kinds of challenges in the economy. Um, I think we're going to have to start thinking really differently about how we uh, make the housing happen that our communities need to thrive. So Kelly, thinking differently, I mean, who is doing that work? You're with Samaritas. I know this is something you're thinking a lot about. Are the right folks thinking and then actually doing it outside of this conference and the conversations about it? I will tell you, I've been very encouraged with conversations I've heard on the island this week. Ryan, I know we were talking a lot about how energized we were and the things that will come off of this island when we get back. I think it's really obvious that we have to work together to solve these type of issues um, and make affordable housing is something that, uh, that is widespread. The, the whole theme of this conference is right the power of and. And I think that is huge in this conversation here. At Samaritas, we, um, we serve a wide variety of different audiences and housing is fundamental to all of those, whether it's children in the child welfare system, uh, whether it's kids aging out of care or if it's refugees. Um, we need to uh, bring in government and business and philanthropy with the power of and to solve these issues together because it really is based to everything else. Yeah. We need more tools than just tax credits to address the affordable yes, rental gap. I absolutely. Think, um, you know, the tools that we have are 
really helpful, uh, but they're very, very finite, very competitive. There's parts of our state that uh, it's extremely difficult to compete and draw those resources and who have very significant housing challenges. And I think uh, we need to get more creative and imaginative about how we're going to address this. It's really, I was very encouraged that at the conference there was a session dedicated to connecting what employers can do to address this issue. Um, because I think we, we, we've, we've lived uh, for a long time thinking about housing as a sort of isolated uh, issue on, on, on an island on its own. And oftentimes the same people who you might think would oppose affordable housing have incentive to support it if the conversation is about the needs for their business. And so um, I, I was just encouraged to see that the conversations come that far that one of the first sessions was on that topic. Kelly, we've just got about 30 seconds, but I mean, are you feeling encouraged? And then quickly, what are the next steps we need to see as everybody travels back 75? Really encouraged. We have to commit to keeping these conversations going and collaborate when we can. We have to lessen restrictions on different housing opportunities for different services or different populations that it serves. It's the only way we're going to grow and combining some of those themes on the island this week um, growing Michigan's population. Housing is an excellent way to do that. It's a hindrance to not have that right now. We build it, they will come. And you combine it with the social services and other types of things that we are talking about here that will just create that population growth across the board, whether it's workforce, whether it's refugees, whether it's kids in our future uh, for tomorrow. Exactly. Kelly, Ryan, yeah. thank you for your work. Thank Thanks you. for thank the you. time. Appreciate it. Thank appreciate you so much, Zoe. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to be right back. Stay tuned.